Having car problems? Well, with Rhoda, getting them fixed is as easy as ordering takeout. They'll come pick up your car for free, do any repair or maintenance needed, and return it right to your driveway. They'll even give you a complimentary video inspection of your car so you can see what needs to be done. Perfect for those of us that maybe aren't so car savvy. Book your appointment online at roda.com. And lucky for you, CityCast listeners get a 20% discount on any service for up to $100 off. Just use the code CityCast20. Today on CityCast DC, Big Schlem is not your average food reviewer or your average bus mechanic. That is part of what makes Big Schlem's taste test so compelling. And it's why, after watching a bunch of his videos, I'm so hungry right now. Schlem is here to tell us his story and to point us to some of his favorite spots for what he calls a light pocket meal. Today is Thursday, May 16th. I'm Michael Schaefer, and here's what DC is talking about. Good day, good person. <laughs> good day, good day. Nice to have you here, Big Slim. Yes, indeed. It's good to be here. So listen, D.C. Uh, it gets a lot of hate as a place with no affordable food. It, do you think that's a fair criticism? Uh, no, it's not a fair criticism. People in places that are criticizing D.C. don't do the research to find out where good food is that you can get for a cheap price. So you recently did this series about what you call light pocket meals, which means 10 bucks or less for a pretty decent amount of food. Yes. Was it hard to find the spots? You went far and wide, like you're in West Virginia and Virginia and D.C. and everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I am pretty much everywhere looking for places. It Honestly, it's fairly difficult to find these places. Now, mind you, that have good food, there are a ton of places that you can get meals for $10 or less, and the food is not going to be great. But to find good food for $10 or less is a little bit more challenging. So can you give me a few recommendations in that category? One spot that I really love uh, that is a light pocket meal is Julius Empanadas, and that's off of 18th Street. I think you can get like three empanadas from there for under $9 or $9 and under so those are that's one of the spots that uh is a light pocket meal besides julius empanadas the well-dressed burrito three tacos and or a burrito for under ten dollars there and really good matter of fact i need to go back because they were you know they gave you uh more bang for your buck it was a huge burrito that i got from there mind you when i went in there they didn't know who i was they didn't know i was reviewing they had no idea. And so that tells me that every customer gets the same thing. Another light pocket meal spot that I do love is Meat and Foods. It's on Florida Avenue, Northwest Washington, D.C. You could go in there and get a really good half smoke. And their chili is awesome. I stamped their chili when I was in there. So, yeah, Meat and Foods on Florida Avenue is another spot, a light pocket meal spot that I go to. So tell me, what is your process for finding spots? Like, do you just try everywhere? Or do, do you got a bunch of people who pass you tips? Okay, so I have a couple of different processes. So you can imagine on my social medias that I have nothing but food on my social medias. So when I'm scrolling through, my, my scroll might be a little bit different than others. You know, I don't really see the funny stuff, the memes or anything like that. I see food. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So sometimes I get restaurant ideas to go to. Other times I'm literally riding by a place. I look at it and I stop and I go in and I go see what's what. Of course, I have restaurants that contact me and want me to come in. So that does, that's starting to happen more often than not. Or is that a sign of success, right? Uh, yeah, I guess you can you can say that people want me to come in and review their food. Now, um, when that does happen, my followers can be reassured that I am still going in and doing a full, real review. Yeah, because I was wondering, you know, for people who haven't seen him, 
the videos. They're amazing. But what you do is, you, you know, you've got a, a particular style, the way you, you zoom in and out and use the camera. And you'll get like a table full or a tray full of a whole bunch of different dishes from whatever place you are uh, shooting and, and zoom in on them. And, you know, you're big, but you're not that big. So if a, if a guy comes in and orders like, you know, everything on the menu or many, many things on the menu, the restaurant is going to maybe think, hey, this guy might be a reviewer. How do you like what's your personal like BS detector to make sure that they're not giving you something special that they're not giving regular people? Well, I literally go in, I go to the cut, meaning I find a corner somewhere. And uh, generally, they don't know. Honestly, I get a lot of sideways looks because <laughs> right. I am ordering so much food. If the waiter or waitress, they're not going to know. Nine times out of ten. It's the manager in the back that gets alarmed and maybe might come out and see what I'm doing. But nine times out of ten, they don't. They have no idea. Now, there have been a couple of instances where they figure me out. It's been instances where customers have figured me out. The customer will walk in and say, hey, you're that stamp guy. <laughs> right. It's, it's funny. Um, men, men generally say the stamp guy. Women generally say Big Slim. And yeah, they'll say that. And then someone in the back gets alarmed. But by that time, my table has to spread out. So, you know, for them to make something up special for me will be null and void at that point. Hey, DC. One of the reasons hosting this show is so important to me is this statistic from the U.S. Surgeon General. Ready for it? The percentage of Americans who report feeling very attached to their community is only 16%. Now, there's a lot of ways to look at that number, which, by the way, is pre-pandemic data. But here's how I'm thinking about it. CityCast DC is something that we're building to make it easier for you to feel attached to this community. I don't want anyone to feel lonely or bored here in DC. I want you to know how you can help make this city more fun and more livable, and where all the good local stuff is at. And if you think we're doing a good job, I'm asking if you'll become a member of CityCast DC today at membership.citycast.fm. You'll get exclusive perks like ad-free listening, event invites, and members-only guides. But most of all, you'll be part of a project dedicated to making the number of D.C. residents who feel attached to this community a heck of a lot higher than 16%. See you over at membership.citycast.fm, and thank you. So you mentioned people call you the stamp guy, and that is one of the catchphrases you use on videos. Things you say like that, or stamp, or decent. So I got two questions. One, uh, how'd you settle on these ratings? <laughs> and two, can you uh, translate them for me? <laughs> no problem. So I am me everywhere that I go. So these sayings are sayings that I say on a daily basis, without, with or without Big Slim. So a conversation between me and my homie, these words are nine times out of 10 going to be used. And if you really look at it, Big Slim is a conversation between me and my best friend. Mm -hmm. Hey, Slim, where you go to today? Oh, yeah, I went to uh, this spot right here. Where it's at? It's at such and such address. What'd you get? Oh, I got the chicken parmesan. How was it? I stamped it. How much was it? It was $15. That's all Big Slim is, is a conversation. So to answer your question, stamp is a word that I use that native Washingtonians use to mark something that is very good. Whether it be food, whether it be a car, whether it be, you know, your favorite bar to go to. Uh, it's just a general word that we use to mark something off that's good. So stamp is five stars. Like that is four and a half stars. Like that, I honestly came from a phrase from Rare Essence, the go-go band back in the day, mm -hmm. must be like that. So after that song came out a long time ago, we used like that to describe something that's pretty dope. You didn't go for Drop the Bomb? No, I ain't go for Drop the Bomb. <laughs> that was a little bit before my time. So tell me, how did you get in this in the first place? I was at work. I do bus maintenance for... Uh, charter bus company in Maryland. So I'm at work. 
I wanted to order a create your own pizza. I went to a place that I'm not going to name to get it. And when I went in there, I received horrible customer service. Horrible. And you're coming from work, so you're like, I am dirty. I'm, I, you know, I'm oily. I, you know, pocket full of money to buy this pizza, but customer service was bad. So I decided on that day to create a Yelp. I had a Yelp. I had the Yelp app. I never opened it, never registered for it, registered for it right outside of that place. Wrote a small article, a paragraph about the horrible customer service. And I was that for that day. The next day, I went to another pizza place because I was still geeking for pizza that day. And I actually got great service. And the pizza was pretty good. So I went back to Yelp and I wrote another article. If I, I, I told myself if I'm going to write something uh, negative about a place, I got to also write the positive about a place that I go to. So I wrote that. Boom, boom, boom. Took a couple pictures. Maybe got about five people to look at it. I didn't start off by looking for followers or anything like that. And uh, then I just started, I just told myself that every place that I go to after this, I'm going to write about. So it started off, it started off by written reviews and to make it easier for myself. And it was literally for myself to make it easier for myself. I started doing videos. Then I made my page public. And yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much the story. That's how I started. So you have like three jobs and you're a dad. This, uh, <laughs> I mean, you're eating, you know, you're doing some cheap meals, but but it can't be that cheap. And the time's not cheap. So how do you make time for it? I'm passionate about it. I love doing it. This is something that I love to do. So I make time for it. I work an early schedule at my day job. I'll go quickly do a review. Boom, boom, boom. Bang that out. Go get the kids from their practice, come home, do the dad thing. And then a few nights out the week, I work a night job. And am I tired? I'm ridiculously tired. <laughs> yeah, I am. But everything is working in sync with each other. So the night job supplements the income for me going on these reviews. Otherwise, you know, I could honestly, you know, get rid of the night job. But, you know, in order for me to keep this business up, I got to kind of keep that job in order to keep doing everything. So, and what? Tell me about what what kind of following you've developed over the time since you you, you made the pages public. Oh man, it's ridiculous right now. So on um, one social media, I have ninety two thousand followers on on that. I just crossed the threshold of fifty thousand followers on Instagram, and then I also post everywhere. So I post on Facebook. Threads, Twitter, YouTube, Google. Google's a big one. And uh, Yelp. And my, my following is blown up. It's blown up. And now, mind you, I don't do it for a following. I'm still doing this out of my love to do this. And it's just it's just Big Slim's reviews everywhere? Yeah, it's pretty much uh, it's Big Slim's taste test, Big Slim's reviews, or Big Slim. Um, and that's S-C-H-L-I-M for people looking it up do you personally like have a, a favorite kind of food i do pizza of course that's about that's how it all started yes pizza is my favorite food what's the best one in dc you think uh oh so we got to break this down by what kind of pizza yeah just give me a few stamps we're gonna go with andy's mm -hmm. where's that you got a couple different andy's one's the Adams morgan you got one off of ninth street but andy's pizza is for your thin crust New York style, no offense to anyone from New York, New York style is pretty dope. For your deep dish Chicago style pizza, there's a place called the DC Shop High. Woo, it's, it, the, they make a corn bread crust. Uh, it's buttery. The ingredients are always fresh. The marinara is dope. And then the last place is Red Light Pizza. And on 14th Street for your just thick crust, that thick crust pizza that a lot of people like, that thick pan. Big Slim, thank you so much for being here. I, one last question about the, the phrases. The, at the end, you say how this is, but you say it really, really slow. Why so? That's just how I was talking when I started the video, though. That's just <laughs> right. how I, it came out. And it wasn't anything I practiced. It was just how I talked. You know, I guess it gives some, uh, it emphasizes the next step of me, you know, judging the food. 
in the next segment. All right. Well, I guess that's how this is. Uh, <laughs> um, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate it, guys. I really do. And that is all for today here on CityCast DC. If you enjoyed the show, why not tell a friend over some cheap eats? You can rate the show, leave us a review, and subscribe to our morning newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye.